In the first part of this lecture, I introduced some new units of measurement, and we also reviewed the metric prefixes. Um, we need to know how to convert between those, so we're going to practice that a little bit here uh, with some problems that are in your packet. You really should already remember how to do this from chemistry, but I know it's been a while, so we're going to review that. As we do the problems, you may find it useful to pause and try the problem yourself before I do it. See if you can remember the basic concepts. And then as you go through, again, pause the video and make sure you've had time to not only write everything down, but also to make sure that you understand how to do the problems. Of course, if you don't understand how to do the problems, that's definitely something you should ask in class <clears throat> as we start to do more of the problems in your packet from class. So we're going to start with number three. We did one and two in class, so we're starting with number three. Now I have to move a little bit further away from my computer to do the problems, so I'll ask you to be patient with me and maybe turn up your volume if you need to. I'm going to start with a really basic one that's within the metric system. How many meters are there in 3.5 times 10 to the 8th kilometers? You may remember from chemistry that we can use a method called dimensional analysis to solve problems like this. And you set up a thing that looks kind of like this. You sort of have two rows, a top and a bottom, and a couple of columns. In your first row, you're going to start off with the number that you were given in the problem, 3.5 times 10 to the 8, and its units. In the next column over, we're going to put the conversion between the two units that we're interested in. We know that one kilometer is 1,000 meters. And that's what we're going to put in this second column here. But we've got to decide which one goes on top and which one goes on bottom. The way you decide this is you want the units to cancel if you're trying to get rid of some of them. In this case, we're trying to get rid of kilometers. So we are going to put kilometers on the bottom here because then I'll have kilometers in the numerator and kilometers in the denominator and they'll cancel. So I'm going to put one kilometer here and a thousand meters here. So you can see my kilometers cancel out, and all I'm going to be left with is meters. And then I multiply everything on top, divide by everything on the bottom. In this case, you end up getting 3.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. That's the basic concept, and hopefully that seems kind of familiar from chemistry. But now we're going to try it with some astronomical numbers. Again, you may want to pause and see if you can think of how to do this yourself before I do it. In this one, we're going to deal with the distance from, the Mars, from Mars to the Sun. We know the distance from Earth to the Sun is 1 AU. Mars is farther away. It's 1 and a half AU. And I want to know how many meters that is. Now, the first thing I need to know is the conversion between astronomical units and meters. And from the last lecture, uh, 1 AU is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So I can set up my dimensional analysis. I start with what I was given, 1.5 AU. And then this information I'm going to put over here with astronomical units on the bottom, so they'll cancel with the astronomical units here. So one astronomical unit goes on the bottom, 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters on the top. The astronomical units cancel, and I'm left with meters. When you get your calculator and multiply that out, you get 2.25 times 10 to the 11 meters. Again, you may want to pause and think through it before you move on to the next example. This one's a little bit tougher because we're actually going to do two conversions. I'm giving you the distance to Alpha Centauri. It's four light years. I said that previously. 
And I want to know what that is in astronomical units. But I have a problem because I have no idea how many astronomical units there are in one light year. I could figure that out, but that's not something I'm going to be given on the test. What I do know is that one light year is 9.5 times 10 to the 15 meters. And I also know that one astronomical unit is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So I'm going to set this up again, but this time I'm going to have three columns because I'm going to do two conversions. I'm starting with four light years. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the light years to meters using what I know already up here. So I'm going to put light years on the bottom and meters on the top. But then I don't want meters. I've got to get rid of the meters. So now I'm going to put 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters on the bottom here because now these meters will cancel with those meters. And so if you look through, the light years cancel, the meters cancel, and I'm left with astronomical units, which is what I want. So I multiply 4 times 9.5 times 10 to the 15, divide by 1.5 times 10 to the 11. Be careful to use either the EE button or parentheses on your calculator when you do that. And you get about 253,000 AU. If you do that on your calculator, you'll see you get lots more threes. It's a repeating decimal. But we'll do some approximate significant figures and leave it like that.